A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary, Mungo, and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games, picture books and toys. Today, they're getting ready to go out on a picnic. Mary has already packed some meat sandwiches and she's got some chocolate biscuits, an apple, a banana and a bottle of orangeade. Mungo has a bone and some biscuits. <laughs> and Midge has a big lump of cheese. Hmm. Midge had a big lump of cheese. Midge, you've eaten your picnic already. Now you've no food to take with you. What a silly mouse. Oh well, I'm ready. So am I, when I've changed my clothes. I'm not ready. I'll wait up here for Midge. We'll join you in the car. Midge likes music. He likes music so much that he's learned to play a flute. But he's only learnt one tune, and he has to play it before he goes out. You listen. By the time Midge had finished his tune, Mary, her parents and the picnic were all in the car outside the flats. Come on, Midge, they're waiting for you. Mungo and Midge are on their way at last. As they live in a flat right at the top of the building, they go down to the street by lift. They have a special way of doing it. If they don't come soon, I'm going without them. We must remember to make sure the lift door is shut. But as usual, Midge was in too much of a hurry. He was already in the car. Oh, there you are, Midge. Hurry up, Mungo. We're all waiting for you now. Poor Mungo. He just had time to get in the car before Mary's father drove off. But a car won't run without petrol. So Mary's father stopped at the nearest garage. How much petrol, sir? Four gallons, please. Mary, Mungo and Midge watched as the man put the petrol in. What's petrol for? To make the car go, of course. Anything else, sir? Would you see if I need any oil and water, please? Midge wondered what that meant. So he jumped out of the window and ran to the front of the car. 
When the man looked under the bonnet at the engine, Midge looked too. He thought it was all very exciting. He had never in his life seen so many strange shapes and pipes and wires and bits of machinery. Midge was very interested and very excited. He watched as the man pulled out the dipstick to find out if the engine needed any more oil. You need a pint, sir. The man went away to get the oil. There was just enough time for Midge to have a good look at the engine. The man came back with a pint tin of oil. Midge jumped back onto the side of the car and watched him pour the oil into the engine. Then he watched the man pouring some water into another part of the engine. Then he looked round and saw something else. Another car was being pushed into the garage workshop. I must go and have a look in there to see what's happening. Inside, he saw that the car had a flat tire. There were a lot of other cars waiting to be mended. He watched a white car going up on a sort of platform. He liked that car because it was a sports car with the hood down. He watched a man look up into it, but it was too high up for Mitch to see anything, so he went back to find the car with the flat tire. He watched the back of the car being lifted up off the ground. Then he hid behind an old oil can and watched the man taking the wheel off the car. Mitch didn't know that Mary's father was driving away, and none of the family knew that Midge wasn't in the car with them. Back in the garage, Midge was very busy watching the new wheel being put on. When it was finished, the car was lowered to the ground again. Then Midge thought he'd go back to his car, in case Mary was waiting for him. But when he got outside, there was no car. They must have gone without me. Oh well, I expect they'll soon come back for me when they find I'm not in the car. So Midge waited. And while he waited, he saw all kinds of cars call in for petrol. The first was a blue car with a light on top. It was a police car. Midge thought that perhaps the police car was looking for him. But the police car went away again, and then the baker's van came in. That was red, with blue and white stripes on the side. By this time, Midge was getting tired of waiting. He went to sleep on top of the water can. But it wasn't a very good place to go to sleep. He went back into the workshop. He found some tools. jumped onto the top of a spanner and slid down it. But the spanner was very greasy. And so was Midge when he'd finished. He played with a pair of pliers and got even dirtier. He found some car keys hanging up, so he had a swing from them. Midge was enjoying himself so much that he'd forgotten he'd been left behind. And all this time, Mary's parents were driving Mary and Mungo through the country, looking for a good place to picnic. At last they found one, and it was only then that Mary and Mungo noticed that Midge wasn't with them. Have you seen Midge lately? No, but I expect he's running around in the grass somewhere. Midge? Midge? Where are you? Midge, the picnic's ready. The last time I saw Midge was when we called into the garage for petrol. I haven't seen him since then either. Perhaps he's hiding in one of the fields. I'll go and look. So Mungo went into a cornfield and started to look for Midge. First of all, he saw two field mice. 
Ah, oh, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm looking for my friend Midge Mouse. He looks a bit like you, only he's grey. Why nay? There be no mice in these parts. Only us. Sorry we can't help you, sir. Then Mungo saw a cow looking at him over a hedge. He was just going to ask her whether she had seen Midge when she said, mmm, so loudly that Mungo thought it might be safer to go back to the picnic. Back in the garage, Midge was still enjoying himself. He was very dirty by now. Then he heard a noise. In another part of the garage, he saw a man washing a car. Hmm, I could do with a wash too. So Midge ran over to the car, climbed up, and started to give himself a good wash all over. The man was very surprised to see a mouse having a shower bath on his car. Well, I never. How about getting some of the soap off now? There. That's better. <coughs> oh, that water is wet and cold. I'll go outside in the sun and dry off. So Midge went outside. As he lay in the sun, he watched more cars come in for petrol. By the time he was dry, he saw a car he knew. Mary and Mungo had come back for him at last. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mungo. Here I am. So this is where you've been. We've been very worried about you. Well, you drove off and left me here. We wouldn't have done if you'd stayed in the car. Come on, boys. We're all waiting to go home. When both Mungo and Midge were in the car, Mary's father drove home. As soon as they got back to the playroom, Midge ran straight to Mary's toy car. Now what are you going to do, Midge? Well, first I'm going to put petrol into it to make it go. Hmm. Then I'm going to open up the engine and put in some oil and some water, because cars need oil and water too. Hmm. Then I shall lift it up on a sort of platform and make sure that everything is all right underneath. Goodness, Midge, you have learnt a lot about cars. Only, first of all, oh, I think I'll have a little sleep. It's hard work being a garage man. Oh, good night. <laughs>